Hey folks, this is Shaner. Uh, today I'm going to walk you through setting up a Kubernetes cluster on top of SmartOS. Um, so SmartOS is our bare metal hypervisor. Um, it's a Illumos derivative. It uh, gives you ZFS and uh, some really good virtual networking called, called Crossbow. Uh, we are on uh, this image version. I think there was actually a newer one released uh, just recently. This is February. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, so this is kind of how I lay out my, my structure on a smart OS machine. Uh, I have ISOs, utils, and zones. Uh, ISOs obviously is where I keep um, miscellaneous ISO image I might want to attach to a VM. Uh, utils is just miscellaneous things I might need to do to a VM, like add a disk, or remove a NIC, update a NIC, etc. And those can, all those snippets can be found in uh, the main page for VM admin. Like add nic. Let's see, there's an example of what you would need. Um, so I just kind of take those out and put them in little snippets. I can just use these real quickly. Um, and then in zones, uh, this is where I keep zone definitions for uh, so I don't have to recreate them every time. So today we're going to go into Kubernetes here. Useful, useful tip if you're like, having stuff on your screen, control L instead of typing like clear, it's a lot faster. All right, so oops, I had to fix up one of these or all these some defs. All right, so we have our master definition and we have three workers we're going to be de deploying. Um, so image admin uh, lists out and can import uh, different images. Uh, I'm using the joint image server and I've imported the bionic image that we're going to be using today. Uh, by default I believe these give you 10 gig root partitions and we, you can add disks uh, if you need to when you're defining the, the zone itself. So let's look, like, let's look at one of these and see what it looks like. Um, so yeah we're switching to Beehive from KVM. That's a lot faster than KVM ever was, or will be for that matter. Um, most uh, efforts are, are being aimed at Beehive, so it's, it's, it's uh, a lot faster. Um, because this is a Kubernetes master, we don't need a whole lot of resources for, for our purposes today. Um, you could increase this if you needed to. Um, so we're specifying our DNS servers. Um, I'm using VLANs on this network. So I'll specify my VLAN ID and the NIC tag um, that I'm going to be uh, tracking off of. And so disks, like I said, um, this is where you'd specify an, an extra disk. To do that, you just basically just copy this dictionary. And spec instead of specifying image U UUID, um, you just specify the size. Of desk you want, so let's see, size of 48. Uh, there, 20 gig. Um, boot, no, this is not a boot drive, boot disk, uh, model, vert IO, and that should do. But no, I'm not going to need this right now, so I'm going to not create that. But uh, the secret sauce is right here. Um, there's a couple of different ways you can do this. You can specify uh, user data. Or you can say, uh, I'm sorry, user script, or cloud init colon user data. And this is basically just cloud init data that will get pushed into the VM, where cloud init will take over and uh, do your bidding. Basically, what that looks like is this. Um, if you go to the cloud init uh, documentation, there's so many things you can do with this. Uh, it's very handy. Uh, so we're using the run command, which will execute one time when the first when the machine first starts up. Um, there's also boot command, uh, which does the same thing, but er earlier on in the boot cycle. Um, so for our purposes, we just need to do it this way. Um, there's a couple different ways. You can specify it as an array, kind of like you would with an exec VE uh, library call. But uh, you can also just do it like this. And this, this is what we're doing. Uh, note, uh, cloud init data is in YAML but we need to pass it, pass it in as JSON. So there's a couple things you need to be aware of. Uh, primarily, uh, any double quotes need to be escaped. Um, 
Um, and of course, you know, we need to replace the non-visible line feeds with human readable line feeds. Uh, so I'm using the Genie Text Editor uh, to do this. I want to just basically replace this with that, and that'll give me a human readable like backslash uh, line feed. So we'll do that. And this is basically exactly what you'd stuff into the key caught in it user data. And that's what you see here. Now you're probably wondering, hey Shane, we're using uh, a bionic image, but you're specifying the Yakety repo. Well, at this time, Google isn't providing a bionic repo. Um, so we're just using the latest one available, which will work fine. Um, it's also Xenio, it would probably work the same, but this is just the most recent one they have, so that's what I'm using. Um, so for the master, where go ahead, we are using these last two steps to initiali initialize the master itself, and then in the workers, we're not using those two steps. So those are the only differences between uh, the master definition and worker definitions. Uh, if you want to see some, again, you can just diff the diff one real quick. So aside from the run command, the cloud init data, we're specifying a little bit more RAM, uh, changing the alias name, obviously, and the IP address, we're incrementing by one for each worker. So let's go ahead and create these things, and uh, we'll get started. Create, and VM admin, you can pass in standard in, pass in your JSON as standard in, or you can specify the like dash F switch. So master. Okay, that deployed. And it might look like it deployed really fast, but I actually paused the video for a few seconds while that uh, deployed. Um, so we we have deployed this. I'm gonna say deploy one more time. <laughs> so it is supposedly running. Um, it's using the IP address I specified in the JSON data, which is, I believe is 1040.050. So we should be able to SSH to that uh, directly. And Ideally, if, if you were not providing a th this key right here for, for cloud in it, which basically imports your SSH key directly from Launchpad, which can be handy, um, you would want to have specified a root authorized keys parameter in the JSON data. Okay, that's not in the not in the main page, but uh, it goes under customer metadata, kind of like our cloud in it did. It's just a different key, It'd be like root authorized keys. Maybe it's key or keys. I can't remember off the top of my head. Let's say keys. And here you just you just paste in your SSH public key, and it would be imported into the Ubuntu user uh, on the machine once it's deployed. I believe that might be uh, in here. So you, yeah, you log in as Ubuntu, not root. Um, and you want to specify your, your SSH key that you're going to be using to log in. Otherwise, because there's no, there's no default password. So uh, make sure you do that. Or if you're using cloud init, you can have it uh, do it this way, SSH, SSH import ID. Or I'm, I'm positive there's a way um, in the cloud init documentation to import an SSH key. Um, so just a heads up there. <laughs> oh yeah, so we were going to log into that machine. So SSH, and because I'm, I've created a user via cloud init uh, as myself, I'm not logging in as a Ubuntu user. Okay, so we're logged in. Let's see where we are in the cloud init script. Looks like it's probably on the upgrade step still. Probably right here. Then we'll go through. These happen pretty pretty quickly. Let's go ahead and deploy our other worker nodes. So the MADM creates. We'll do it this way this time. All right, that's deployed. So we can build, we should probably log into that one too while this one's doing this. Let's just go ahead and try it. Probably.
probably still coming up. So give it a few seconds. Okay, here we go. Alright, so being a worker, um, it basically does the exact same steps without the but without the uh, kubeadm uh, init command. Um, so that's going to go on and do all the same th same stuff. Let's go back and check on the uh, on the master. Let's look at my history. I'm going to pause, a bit, pause the video here and we'll wait for this to finish up. Okay, so minor issue here. I didn't actually test this first. <laughs> Why, you know? Uh, so saying no cube add in package, um, let's make sure that the app repo is set up correctly. So we see that the sources list. Uh, looks good. Well, maybe it's, maybe we can't use yak yakety yet, so let's let's fix that. Yakety's, we'll use Zenial. And we're trying to install these three things. So. I guess I'm still trucking along. I'll try again. There we go. All right, so yeah, it looks like uh, that Yaki repo will not work. So just a FYI there. So I'll have to fix my uh, cloud init script. Okay, so that's installed. Let's go ahead and. Uh, do the cube in, at ADM in it uh, that our cloud in it script should have done, but it could install the necessary uh, packages. So let's go ahead and do that. Kube ADM in it. <laughs> Interesting typo there. You can also perform this action in beforehand using, <laughs> I think that in should not be there, but. Whatever. All right, so while it's doing that, I'm going to go ahead and fix up the worker that we deployed because that probably I used the same uh, repo there. So let's go back and fix that. I don't think we need probably need cube control on this node, but maybe you do. I don't remember. Uh, still working along somewhere. So it's still installing Docker, so we'll wait a little bit here. And let's try again. Still working. <laughs> oh, it's trying to do it. Hey, maybe I did it in time. Uh, let's see. Yep, okay. I, I, I was able to change it in time, so I don't have to manually install it. That's good. So we'll leave this here for now. And so Cube ADM has finished initializing. So now we have this handy dandy command that we can use to uh, join the nodes to the master. And let's go ahead and try that. This one? No. Nope. This one? Yes. Alright, so let's give this a shot. Uh, for some reason, Kubernetes does not like Docker. Uh, let's try this again. 
Okay, good deal. Um, let's go back to what I want to calculate. Master, so we can see all the notes. Oh, I had to copy this stuff out. That's right. Awesome. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and deploy the rest of these. This guy. both of those and then I will run the same join command uh, on those when those are done but that's pretty much it guys um, from here you can deploy your kubernetes things be all kuber cool uh, but if you have any questions at all feel free to uh, email me or uh, just comment down below and I'm just getting started out here so if you want to see more of this co this content or more in-depth kind of stuff, just let me know. Um, I'm open to about anything. So, all right, guys, uh, I'll put some more, some links in the description, like uh, documentation, or sorry, link to the documentation with Cloud in it, and the joint image uh, documentation, uh, if you have any other questions. Uh, all right, thanks for watching, guys.